Where are you under here? Where'd you go? Oh, there you guys are. What's going on guys? Hayden back. So some of you guys are probably wondering why you're up there. And honestly, I'm not sure. I'm just really trying to get your attention. And now that I have it, I need to catch you up to speed on the housing market. You see home prices rose faster than ever in 2021, rising 17% from last year. Rents are now around $1,827 a month in April, up 16.7% from a year ago. And to make matters worse, mortgage rates even hit a high of 6%. You see these higher mortgage rates and prices are putting a damper on the housing market, causing applications for a mortgage to drop 21% from a year ago as fewer and fewer people can afford to buy. But in the most recent times, we are starting to see something pretty phenomenal happen. Prices, I don't know if you've noticed, throughout our economy are actually beginning to fall, and I'm not joking. You see, the U.S. mortgage rate on a 30-year loan just recently fell to 5.3%. Now, even rental and housing prices are also beginning to fall, and I'll touch up on that in a minute. Gas prices have even started to come back down too, lowering the average from $5 to $4.75. And I was actually pretty shocked when I saw this too here in Florida at Costco. Uh, gas was just $4.15. And just like two weeks ago, I believe gas was almost $5 a gallon here in Florida. And by the way, do you guys know what else is pretty shocking too? Smashing the like button for the YouTube algorithm. By doing this, it actually helps YouTube and I know you want to see more content like this. And it also is the only thing that will benefit from going up during this recession. So just go ahead and give it a tap. Now back to what I was saying. Even food prices are beginning to fall if you haven't noticed. The UN's Food and Agricultural Organizations Index declined 2.3% for May, making the third consecutive monthly decline even though it's still 23.1% above its value a year ago. Now all I'm saying is we may have just peaked in regards to inflation, which would be a huge relief to our housing market, stock market, and our wallets. Just don't expect it to happen quick. Even though prices are starting to come back down, it may take another six months before things get back to how they once were. This also means the housing bubble might be the next to pop unless it already has and about 81% of you will be affected. And I'll explain who those 81% are in a second. Now with the way the economy is currently going, the percentage of Americans who say they are struggling financially has jumped by double digits since last year. 42% of the middle class said they are struggling to maintain their financial situation. You see, only 19% of Americans are considered upper class and they don't really get affected by recessions like everyone else. The wealthy are always more likely to win during recessions and wealth and income inequality usually grows. The upper class and cash heavy invest and buy lower priced businesses and lower priced stocks and bonds, leaving the remaining 89% of Americans to struggle with layoffs, inflation, and this crazy housing market. Now this is something the middle class will have to deal with until the end of the year, unless something changes. You see, this month is extremely important for our economy and might be the break the middle class needs. We will soon find out our consumer price index on Wednesday, July 13th, which might already be out by the time you watch this, and it's expected to show headline inflation rising above May's 8.6% level, with economists and analysts even thinking 9% we might see in June, which would be absurd. Now, don't panic. Obviously, this isn't a good thing, but this could mean the Feds will continue to hike interest rates. Although this might sound like a bad problem, it's actually really not. We'll also see the start of the second quarter earnings season as well as our second quarter GDP. This will ultimately determine if we have been in a recession since January. If it comes true, it would really mean that we would officially be six months into a recession. And the good thing is post-World War II, recessions typically last about six to 12 months. And as I said before, this could mean that the recession will be over, if not recover, by the end of this year, which is honestly great news to hear. All in all, this means both the CPI data and the second quarter earnings season will help show where the market and the economy will go in the coming weeks ahead. Now, the reason we want the feds to raise interest rates is so they can slow down consumer demand, as this is the main culprit behind the housing bubble and all the inflation you are seeing. Now, June will most likely be a bad month, like everyone is predicting, and inflation will most likely be higher than 8.6, probably closer to 9%. But it is also the first month that the feds hiked their benchmark interest rate by 75 basis points, the biggest increase since 1994. This is why we saw mortgage rates spike to 6%, as they are indirectly affected by the Fed's rate hikes. So even though we might see higher inflation in June, we should start to see the effects from the Fed's raising interest rates this month in July as things take time to play out. So we won't know if it works until August for July. So you can see how things are slightly backdated. Now, this is what I believe is also causing
housing prices to drop this month, but we won't know for sure until next month. This could also prove that what the feds are doing is also working and incentivizing them to continue to raise interest rates at their next meeting, because obviously even if prices do come down and interest rates do come down, and we're now looking at 7%, they have to keep dropping it so that we're around 2 to 3%, which is considered normal. This also means all types of loans, guys, will continue to go up this year, such as car loans, credit card loans, personal loans, and so on. So if you plan on borrowing money, make sure it's at a fixed rate because it will most likely continue to go up quite a bit this year. Now back to the housing market, buyers are finally getting a slight pardon from this year's massive rise in mortgage rates. And the housing market has finally started to cool down across the country. You see the jump in costs has pushed more buyers out of the real estate hunt, causing new and used inventory to increase and sellers to cut prices in certain areas, specifically the Sun Belt like California and Florida. The national inventory of active listings even increased by 18.7% over last year, and the inventory of homes actively for sale in the 50 largest U.S. metros overall increased by 27.9% over last year in June. Now, this also couldn't have come at a better time since the median price of a home hit $450,000 in June, 17% higher than last year. And to be honest, I'm not sure how much more the middle class can afford since this is quite above most millennials' budgets. Still, we have to remember there is a big imbalance in the housing market that's caused part of this major housing problem. We still need 4 million more homes in order to keep up with the demand, even if demand is starting to slow down. Home builders are even getting worried that if they build them, people won't buy them because they're too expensive, which should lead to an even bigger dip in the amount of homes being built. Rentals are also starting to drop. After searching 11.4% over the past 12 months, the median national rent for one-bedroom apartments only rose 0.5% in June compared to a month earlier, while the median two-bedroom rent fell 2.9%. Obviously, this all depends on your geography and location, but it's still good to know. I've also been keeping an eye on the prices my current apartment complex charges here in Fort Myers, Florida, and Florida has really no rent limit increase unlike New York, which I believe is around 5% a year. This is also to blame why Florida had the highest year-over-year -year rent increase of 29%. When I first signed my lease on my new one-bedroom, 1,000-square-foot apartment, it was going for $1,850 or $1,850 in December of 2021, and there was no availability. Like, literally, my room was the only room left available of a 300 multi-unit apartment. Now, by May, my same-style unit was going for $2,350, and the apartment complex had 30 units available. Now, moving forward in July, my same apartment is going for $19.50, and there are around 40 units available, which means people are leaving and prices are dropping significantly. So who knows where we'll be in the next couple of months. We might be less than what I originally rented my apartment for. What's even crazier is typically, rents actually peak during summer months, but we're seeing the opposite happen in these major cities. With surging inflation, interest rates, and the possibilities of a recession, people are starting to tighten up on their spending and reconsider how they live. Whether that's moving to a cheaper area or living with roommates. The month-over-month -month declines in rent were most dramatic in some of the Sun Belt cities like I mentioned earlier, which saw the sharpest gains over the past couple of years. In Miami, two-bedroom median rents fell 6%. San Diego's one- and two-bedroom median rent prices both fell 6.1%, and Fort Lauderdale, Florida saw rent decline by nearly 6% for both apartment sizes. Honestly, though, I'd be surprised if we saw anything major happen to the housing market as a whole, and I highly doubt anything like 2008 will happen this time around. You see, the 2008 crash was caused by too many unwarranted subprime mortgages, which isn't happening now. However, I do expect home prices and rentals to stay pretty average. And for the places that saw the biggest increases, like Florida and San Diego and some of these other places like Texas, I'm sure there's going to be some sort of negative price drop. But overall, I can't see anything major happening. The reason these major cities that everyone is moving to will fall is really because of the rapidly increasing mortgage rates. Now, just think about it for a moment. It was so easy to move back back in 2021 when the mortgage rates were only 2.96%, a record low, and now interest rates are back at the same levels that we're seeing during the previous housing bubble during 2008. So it just doesn't make sense for someone to sell their house now and move to these new cities when interest rates are at the same levels they were 12 years ago. Why sell your home now and finance a new one at a higher rate than your current one you're living in? This is what will cause these major cities to drop because people will no longer be moving and inventory will begin to spike. Very similar to what's happening right now within the car market. You see, the car market, for instance, has already popped. And if you want to know more about that, then stick around to the end of the video. Otherwise, inflation should soon be under control as the economy stabilizes. We've even seen 372,000 more jobs added to the economy in June, which was 120,000 more than expected. So overall, the economy is getting stronger. 
And the feds will most likely be increasing interest rates by another 75 basis points this month. And investors are even saying the S&P is expected to go up by 5.7% in its second quarter. So the past April, May, and June. What's crazier is they even believe that third and fourth quarter will be 10.9 and 10.5% respectively, which means we could see the S&P 500 recover 27.1% from its low during the second quarter, meaning that we could end the year around 4,600 basis points or just 3.8% down overall, which would honestly be an incredible recovery and buying opportunity. But with all that being said, guys, hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Make sure to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, turn on post notifications, and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Thank you.